Hey everybody, welcome to the 18 Strong Podcast, brought to you as always by Link Soul. Today we've got an incredible guest. We've got Colin Masterson, one of the sports performance coaches at Villanova, and he works with not just the golf team, but several of the other sports there at Villanova. So we're going to get kind of a glimpse into, first of all, just kind of how the younger generation is training in the competitive world of golf, but also I'm really curious to talk to him about you know the crossover between what they do with the other sports, the differences in the way that they train the golfers versus some of the other sports. So, Colin, I'm going to bring you on in, man. Welcome to the show. Hey, Jeff. You know, I appreciate you having me. Um, I've been a fan of the podcast, so glad to finally get a chance to hop on the show. Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm curious to hear a little bit about your background before we jump into all the fitness stuff and the golf stuff. Um, it sounds like you took a little detour into the corporate world before getting into the sports performance world. So just give me a little background on you, maybe even kind of your sports background, and then what brought you into the fitness world? Yeah, absolutely. So I, uh, I actually went to college at uh, Widener University, which is pretty local to Villanova, uh, not far from Philadelphia, PA. So I played four years of college football there um, and graduated with an accounting major. So I, after I graduated, I moved on to be an accountant for about four and a half years at two different companies. And I always knew sports was kind of what I wanted to be in. So I uh, quickly made kind of a reroute at a pretty early age to say, hey, I want to get back in sports. How am I going to do it? So I took an opportunity down at the University of Maryland, um, you know, as an intern with just football. Uh, things went great down there with their staff, and then I was fortunate to come back close to home um, at Villanova University as an intern and then eventually becoming full-time. So, you know, my background of playing sports was I played basketball, baseball, football, lacrosse. You know, golf was a newer one for me. I started playing as soon as I graduated. I know that was people say, hey, you're an accountant now. Time to get some golf clubs. So I made the switch over to golf. So, you know, you played played football. Um, you work with the football team at Villanova also, correct? Correct. What other sports are you working with besides the golf team? Yeah, currently I assist with football um, with the great, uh, you know, football director, Mike Tucker. Um, I also work with women's lacrosse, softball, women's tennis and, and golf. And then I, you know, last year, pre-COVID, I was assisting with pretty much all the men's sports on that side. So I assisted with baseball, uh, you know, men's lacrosse, men's tennis, uh, and then some volleyball as well. So... First of all, your golf game, what's it like these days? It's not bad. You know, I played quite a bit over quarantine, didn't have a whole bunch going on. So, you know, I, I shoot, I guess, probably right around average. I would say my lowest score has been a 78. You know, my highest score when I first started playing, I was well into the 100. So, you know, I'm, I'm making some work at it. I, I talk to the Villanova guys all the time about, like, hey, man, I, I want to get down to the 75 range. So I'm working at it. Do you get to play with those guys at all, any of the, the team members? Uh, you know, sometimes I'm able to, so on like a Friday, if I get done work a little bit early, you know, I'll talk to those guys if they're heading to the course to play, you know, and it's funny, it's kind of a trade-off. Like I coach them through things that I'm good at with strength and conditioning. And then, you know, they give me a little bit of trade-off in my short game. So they've been helping me out, uh, getting out playing with those guys a little bit. Yeah. One of my favorite things to do with, with clients of mine is to have the chance to go out and, and be with them in their environment. Right. And, yeah. and get to see like how they think through the game. And, and I'm talking even like the, the local country club guys that have just been playing forever. They know the course knowledge. They know, they know where to hit it, where not to. I mean, I just am, have become such a student of, of trying to learn what these guys have been doing. And then when you get to play with guys, you know, of, of the caliber that you're playing with, um, it's just really interesting to be able to see that. And that's when you get to see them really shine um, as opposed to what you maybe see in the gym where maybe they might not be the most skilled, but then you take it, you go out there and it's like, you know, the, the coin has been reversed. It, it's pretty cool. I would imagine you've yeah. got some pretty solid slick players on the, the Villanova team. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that. I guess it was probably about two weeks ago I went out and played with the team. Um, and it's just funny to hear them like, hey, you know, this is the way the green's going to slope. You want to play it out to here. Like, that's the first time I've been on the course with somebody who's, you know, knowledge of golf is way above mine. So to hear how they see the course and how they play the course, like, I shot so much better. My confidence was high. It was just like, hey, you don't need much here. You know, it's going to slope down. So that was very interesting to kind of see, like you said, a look into their world and how they, you know, see the sport rather than how I see the sport. Because I'm usually out there trying to hit as far as I can, but they kind of play a little bit smarter than I do. Yeah, yeah. 
and, and that's why they have scholarships to a, a school like Villanova. That's right. That's so right. what? Um, how has the team done the past couple of years? Uh, you know, what kind of a program do you guys have? Are you looking pretty strong this coming year? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we definitely have some big time hitters. You know, that's what Coach Wilkes says. Uh, you know, the guys have really good club head speed, which has been awesome. When I when I got them, I think it was two years ago. Um, you know, they were kind of a staff that you know, I mean, a team that did you know training kind of all sorts of stuff. They were big into like you know muscle stuff, and it was just like, what are they doing? So I think the biggest thing that they've seen from my end is like, I'm going to train them like they're athletes first. Mm-hmm. Um, so we really train hard. Like you know, I, I train them just as hard as I would train any other team. It's not any run of the mill program because, Hey, this is, you know, the golf team, like these guys want to train and they want to get after it. So I think over the past two years, I think they've really started to dedicate themselves a little bit to the weight room and to the course. And and their season got cut a little bit short last year with COVID, but, uh, you know, looking forward to this year, coach Wilkes said, you know, this has been a great fall for them. They've been hitting the ball further. The guys are playing really well. So we're hoping, you know, to line up for a really strong spring. Yeah, did you guys have a lot more time together because of this whole situation, or or at least time to give them things to prepare? Probably not time in person together, but um, has that been beneficial to you guys? Yeah, yeah, I I definitely think we've spent some more time together overall. I think it's more before we were training those guys at six o'clock in the morning because they want to play in the afternoon, um, and that's just what fit their schedule. But during this time, we've been able to train them at eight o'clock, so it's two hours later. These guys are way more awake. They're way more bought in. And, you know, it's funny. Our training actually ends this week for those guys so they can focus on finals. And they're not going to be playing a bunch because the weather's going to change here. But those guys are already asking, like, hey, coach, when can I get to the gym and train with you again? I want to train some more. Let's try and get some sessions in next week. So I think overall as a collective group, like I'm bought into them, but they're also bought into me. So I think that's been really, really good for both of us. When you've got these these young guys coming in, you know they're coming in at 18 years old now. Um, are you seeing that? Like, what kind of training levels are they coming in at? Are are these guys already? Have, do they have some experience being in the gym? It, does it depend on the kid? And do you think that's that's completely changing as we're seeing this new era of golfers? Yeah, I, I think we have a, a you know a pretty good slew of both. I've gotten guys that I think have probably never trained before. And then I got guys that were multi-sport athletes um, in high school, you know, and we always talk about that as, as a sports performance staff is our best players, you know, whether it's football, baseball, golf, are the multi-sport athletes, the guys that have been exposed to a bunch beforehand. Um, you know, not to say that a guy who doesn't play in a sport can't be good at golf because there certainly are players like that. But I think what you're seeing now in the new age golfer is it's the guy who's, you know, a really, really good athlete. You're looking on Saturdays and Sundays, these guys that are in, you know, the final you know, final grouping, final pairings are, these guys are fit guys. They're strong guys. They all look very similar. They're not the, you know, the big, maybe overweight guys that we've maybe seen in the past. Yeah. My dad and I, we were just watching football this past weekend and, you know, we're just commenting on how, how big and strong these guys are. And you see this on a daily basis with the football team. And, you know, I mean, any athletics these days, basketball, football, even, you know, I come from a soccer family, but like you go to a professional soccer game now and and guys are so much bigger. And it's like, man, imagine if, you know, these guys that are out on the football field, the athleticism they have, the power they have, like if, if some of those athletes are starting to gear towards golf, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, everybody thinks that Bryson DeChambeau is, is like, the the mother of all golf ball drivers right yeah but i mean you yeah. you take some of these other athletes and un- put their skills and athleticism into the game of golf it could be really interesting to see what happens in the next 5 10 15 years with this game for sure and i think it's a game that's become more accepted before you know more now than ever i think it was very heidi tidy in the past and i think a lot of people during quarantine honestly it's like hey what else can you do golf courses were open you were seeing constantly like tee times were booked every day. You know, guys were, you know, new to golf. You saw in the NBA bubble, they were taking guys out to play golf. It's like, I would never thought you'd see some of those guys playing golf, but they're saying, Hey, I want to learn to play. I think it's going to be a, you know, a new age sport of the future that, and that everyone's going to try and get their hands in. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Now you were talking about how, um, when you're training your guys, you know, you train them 
I'm, I'm sure you train them differently than you train the football team, but you train them just like any other athlete. I mean, you, you guys get after it like any other athlete would. What are some of the things that you're then prioritizing with these guys that may be different than the football team, but you know, that maybe the general public might not really realize, Oh man, like that's, that's something that you're working on with these golfers. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, that comes more on the specific thing. So if you want to look at general strength, like I'm trying to get these guys strong, you know, because sometimes the strongest guys, the other guys that like, hit the ball the furthest. So I got my guys, you know, either we're deadlifting, we're doing some sort of upper body lift, we're doing some sort of total body lift. I think the one thing that you'll see that's more specific that we may do that you won't see maybe a football player do is we will work on more rotational aspects of the sport. So I'm not doing that in season while they're playing, but during our off season, um, during our strength phase, we'll usually have, you know, a lower day and a total day. And then we'll have another day where we're just trying to work on some rotational aspects, whether it's, you know, med ball throwing, whether it's banded payoff press, trying to get some anti-rotation, anti-extension, anti-flexion work on them. I think we spend a little bit more time there than I normally would with uh, someone who plays football. You mentioned kind of changing up for the off season, having like your strength phase. How do you kind of break down the year for these guys when, you know, obviously when they're in season and also, I mean, a lot of these guys not only play collegiate level golf, but they have, you know, tournaments throughout the rest of the year for the right. amateur stuff and things like that. How hard is it to coordinate and, and how do you kind of break down into some of those different phases? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is communication for those guys. And we tell them like, Hey, just let me know what you're doing so that we can program you accordingly. But when I get them um, in the fall, you know, they're usually not playing right away. They're probably playing on their own, but I know I have a general four to six weeks where I can say, Hey, we're going to do some general strength, some general uh, movements, throw a lot of tempo on things and just see these guys move. Cause I don't know what they've been doing the summer. If some guys have trained, if some guys have not trained. So we're just going to do some general strength movements, try and, you know, lay down some tissue for these guys and try and build them up like a little bit of hypertrophy work. After that, they'll probably play a couple tournaments. Um, so for that sake, it's kind of, hey, let's make sure they're ready to go. So I don't want those guys being sore. So knowing they're going to play on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we'll do our strength work probably on a Tuesday. If I see them Thursday morning, it's more of like, hey, a CNS primer. Like I'm trying to get these guys firing on all cylinders, making sure they're feeling good. Um, and then after that, they'll probably be done right around Thanksgiving time around here. So from that point on, I'd have pretty much four weeks with them where they're not going to play any golf at all for these guys. So for me, that's four weeks that un untapped. So we're going to try and get strong as we can there and test some of these numbers. So what we like to do is I like to try and get a pull-up number on these guys. I like to try and get a floor press number on these guys. I like to try and get um, a barbell glute bridge number, and then we'll try and get some sort of sumo deadlift with them to try and protect their low back. So those are some numbers that we've been able to test. Um, and actually just the other day, we were testing some verticals. People are like, oh, why are you testing their verticals? It's like, Hey, the higher you jump, you know, there's been studies that relates to higher club head speed. So if you can put force down, you know, into the ground, you can swing the club uh, faster. So we're going to test their vertical and we're going to try and make them jump higher. When you're looking at all these different, um, you know, like the pull up, the floor press, those kind of things, do you have specific parameters that you're kind of shooting for for these guys? When we had Spencer Tatum on, we talked a little bit about, you know, just different ideals that, you know, kind of putting in some sort of a bar that you want to kind of shoot for. I mean, everybody's going to be different. Like you said, some of the kids are coming in with no training knowledge whatsoever, but do you have certain kind of numbers that you're looking for, or at least telling these guys, you know, like, Hey, this is kind of what we're striving for here. Yeah. I, I think like you said, it depends obviously on the guy, but you know, for the most part, I want to, I want to get them. Usually we'll test them at some point before we retest them and during that strength phase, I just want to see them get stronger. So that's mm -hmm. like the one thing for them. But if you're looking at like numbers wise, like, Hey, for some sumo lifts, like the sumo deadlift, I'd like to see these guys pulling, you know, 225, 275 for like maybe one to three reps. I think that's a pretty good weight for some of these guys. Well, glute bridge, if I tell them glute bridge, it's the same thing, 275, 315. These guys are not afraid to push the weight, which has been awesome for them. You know, pull-ups, I think most guys should be able to do three to five pull-ups, like really strict pull-ups um, to have some upper body strength there. Um, and then the floor press for them, you know, can be a little bit different. It depends on, uh, honestly, like their tricep strength and what they really have in their training age. But for the most part, I'd like to see them get to, you know, the 135, 185 range, I think would be pretty strong for some of these guys. But we have guys that press, you know, 225, 230 on the floor press too. So we got some stronger guys on the team as well. Yeah, it's interesting, like talking about these kind of numbers, talking about these kind of exercises, like, you know, 10 years ago, this wasn't even a thing, you know, no. like nobody was talking about this stuff 
for golf. I, I just find it so right. fascinating. Um, with uh, some of the guys, um, how individualized can you get with them? Do you have enough time to to actually spend with, with each individual guy? I mean, obviously, when you have teams and you've got multiple teams that you're working with, is it hard to to coordinate that and hard to to get really specific? And do any of these guys also have like their own? personal trainer, you know, golf fitness professional that they've already been working with. I assume some of them are pretty high caliber golfers. Yeah, I I believe some of them definitely have some of their own trainers as well um, that they might work with at a country club or someone that they just grew up playing with. So, you know, I always tell them, like, it comes down to communication. Let me know what you're doing with them so we're not double dipping on our end. Um, And I'm fine with them working with somebody else. Let's just make sure we're not hitting the same exercises twice a week. Um, So that's one of the things. Um, But other than that, we don't get too specific from person to person. One thing we would like to do, I think moving forward is able to have a coach that can do that with these guys. Cause it's not a huge team, but working with four other teams and these guys are in here twice a week. I got other teams are three times a week. It's hard to get super specific, but what we will do is, you know, with communication with these guys is, Hey, you know, this exercise doesn't feel great for me. Or, you know, I might have a guy, um, Danny, one of the kids on the team, our sumo deadlift, like it doesn't feel great for him pulling it off the floor. So, Hey, we pull off with two DC blocks. It elevates him a little bit and it takes some pressure off his low back. So, Hey, there for him, you know, it's a little bit of a modification. So, and then we've had guys with some issues like, Hey, grip issues, like my grips failing. So we'll just find an alternate exercise to try and get the same range of motion for them. So they might do, you know, a pit shark or something like that. But at the end of the day, we're going to work around some nuances, but we're all pretty much staying on the same uh, training plan. When you're talking with the guys and you're talking with the coaches, um, I'm just curious, you know, we hear so much about, distance these days and and especially it's interesting because you're working with a population of golfers that like they're there to compete right where Mm -hmm. a lot of the listeners of the show a lot of the people that that tune into the golf channel yeah they want to get better at golf but it's it's also kind of a hobby it's kind of an enjoyment factor but these these guys that you're working with some of them most likely want to go play professional the goal is get the ball in the hole in as few shots as possible. Is there a huge conversation about distance and how important that is at this level? You know, the, it's funny. The coach talks about the club head speed with these guys. So, you know, they do the super speed golf clubs sometimes, you know, the work on their club head speed just to measure it. And that's something that I allow the coach, you know, he handles that for them. Um, for me, I just tell these guys like, hey, we got to get your glutes strong. It's glutes and core for you guys. We can make those two strong. I think we're going to do our work. And then from there, you know, ever since I took the TPI certification, I've really tried to understand, you know, not just for golf, but even for pitchers and baseball and quarterbacks and football is it's the kinematic sequence. If you're strong as hell, but you can't efficiently move, right. You can't kind of let the energy flow up the chain the way it's supposed to. And you're an inefficient mover. Well, that energy is going to go somewhere. So you're going to have energy leaks and you're probably going to lose power at some place. So I think the biggest thing for me is, hey, trying to understand the kinematic sequence. And I think I leave some of that stuff to the coach to make sure these guys are efficient movers in their swings. Yeah, that's that's a great point that you bring up because, I mean, you can be strong as an ox and not move very well or not move in the right way that a golfer needs to move, right? And some of the things that I see you doing on your Instagram page, which if you guys aren't aren't following Colin on Instagram, it's, it's uh, birdie underscore fitness underscore, right? Uh, Correct. Yep. So, so go check that out because you do some really cool things and, and you've been doing a lot of great demos lately of just some very unique things that I know are related to speed and movement and those types of things. How do you, or, or what are some ways that people can kind of bridge that gap into just being in the gym, working on lifting weights to then utilizing ways to, to, bring about that sequence or bring about a little speed or something that's going to carry over to the golf course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different things you can do, but I think you need to find out what you need the most of. So for our guys, it's that base level strength. So what we try and do is we try and get them strong. And then as we convert to the springtime, we'll have pretty much from January when they come back till March until they finally start playing is we might even hit a power phase with those guys. So for us, we're going to hit the sumo deadlift, but we're going to throw chains on the bar and we're going to have a tendo hooked up. I want to see those guys moving the bar at a certain meter per second because they need to be able to produce force very, very fast. So That's one of them. We do a ton of plyos, whether it's jumping, you know, vertical jumps, horizontal broad jumps, lateral broad jumps for these guys. And then honestly, the best thing that I think we've incorporated is the sprinting. You know, there's such a carryover from sprinting. It's the fastest movement you can do. So you can lift weights as fast as you want in the weight room. You're never going to move it as fast as you are when you're sprinting. So we sprint these guys one time a week. One, I think it keeps them feeling good. 
because a lot of these guys, like I said, they haven't played sports before. Some, some have, but the sprinting, you just watch it clean itself up and, you know, we're eliminating some of the soft tissue injuries. We're producing forces at the highest amount that you possibly can. And it's allowing their pelvis to move more freely rather than being a bilateral exercise. So I think overall the guys feel better from being exposed to some of those things. How much interaction do you have with the coach um, when it comes to what you guys are doing, what they're doing out there? And, you know, there's this, this whole um, question of how much like skill related things should you, or should you even do in the gym? Do you do any skill related things or is that all saved for the golf course and for the practices? Yeah. So, you know, they always, you know, say, Oh, sports specific. And that's a lot of stuff you'll see on the Instagram. And, and those guys get a lot of likes for like, Oh, this is, you know, sports specific exercise. You got a guy stand on a BOSU ball, swinging his speed stick saying like, Oh, we're working on balance. But for me, it's like my job as a, as a strength coach is to get these guys strong, Let's be mobile. Let's be stable where we need to be stable. Let's have a strong core. Let's have some strong glutes. And then when it comes to sports specific stuff, you know, I let Coach Wilkes handle that business for the most part. Now, I'm not saying there's not some sports specific things that we work on. Like we'll throw a ton of med balls, um, you know, rotational med balls. We'll do some over speed with the med balls as well, just to get these guys rotating at higher speeds than they're able to with the club. So when it comes to the club, it feels a lot lighter. But for the most part, I let, you know, Coach Wilkes handle the practice stuff, but he gives me full reign in the weight room. And, you know, he works out with the guy, so he knows exactly what we're doing. He knows how they feel. You know, I do the workouts that these guys do, so I know how they feel. Um, so I think the biggest thing I said is just, like, the communication between me and the head coach is saying, hey, make sure I'm on the same page. I know they got a tournament this weekend. I'm going to take care of them on Thursday, make sure they're feeling fresh going into Friday, Saturday. That's pretty cool that, that all of you guys are doing the, the workouts with these guys too, especially the coach, so he understands mm -hmm. what's going on. It's not just completely spread out. Uh, back to just kind of the, the power phase stuff, the sprinting stuff. What are some of the, the ways that you see people implementing some power and sprinting things incorrectly? Um, or, you know, like, again, because speed, distance, all of that is so, so popular right now, and, and, rightfully so because it, it produces results but you know i think that there's there's smart and safe ways to do it then there's there's other ways that i think people just kind of in the general public or what they see on instagram or social media or in golf digest or whatever they might pick up on these little things and not really be doing it correctly or to the to the most advantage advantageous way yeah i mean my biggest thing is i'm going to keep my guys grounded i'm going to keep both feet on the ground we're not going to do anything where we're standing on something, you know, that's not stable for them to try and get them to replicate their swing. I think some other things you'll see is, you know, guys practicing their swing, you know, with a cable doing like a cable chop. I don't think that's wrong, but I think like, Hey, what are we trying to work on? Are we trying to work on the acceleration part? Are we working on the deceleration part? I like to try and use a lot of bands for our rotation stuff to try and like, Hey, you can move out more for some emphasis of like, Hey, let's try and get strong in this position or, you can move a little bit closer, but I think guys try and overdo the power and strength phase. It's like, hey, we're going to try and work on power for eight weeks. It's like, hey, no, let's get strong for four weeks. Let's do a three-week power phase, and let's get back to the strength and see if we can produce more force next time we get through it. So I think the wave loading of getting strong, hitting some power, get strong, hit some power, rather than be like, hey, we're going to hit a 14-week you know, power cycle because they're playing in season. I just want these guys you know, doing the same movements that they're already doing on the course in the weight room. I'm curious what you found with these guys, especially the guys that maybe haven't trained much at all. Um, th this is kind of their first in real introduction to strength training, hopefully getting stronger, you know, and, and feeling that difference in their body. What has that done just for them, like the way they carry themselves, the confidence on the course? Because I think that's another piece that isn't talked about a whole lot where – and, and most of us have experienced at some point in our life where, you know, you go into a program or you start working out or whatever it is. Maybe you do a fitness DVD and all of a sudden you're stronger, you look a little bit better. And it's like, man, I, I, I feel I feel better overall. Have you seen that with some of the guys? Yeah, and I think that comes down to like people don't know what feels good because they've never felt good before. So for some of these guys, like, oh, they want to stay away from the weights because they're afraid of, oh, I won't be able to move. I'm going to get stiff, this other thing. I think when they finally see that, Hey, I'm preaching movement to my exercise, full range of motion exercises. I'm not just, you know, back squatting. I'm not just benching. Like we're actually doing movements that allows the body to move kind of free flow. We use a ton of kettlebell work for these guys. I think overall, you know, I always ask guys like, how are you feeling? You know, how are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? 
do you feel stronger? And, you know, you're starting to see a lot of like, yes, I feel stronger. I feel stronger. I think overall, it's like just a confidence boost for these guys. Like, hey, I'm feeling stronger. I'm hitting the ball a little bit further. My contact on the court feels good. I'm not tired when I'm walking around the course, you know, when I'm carrying the whatever it is, 25 pound bag throughout a round, things like that. And I think for these guys being golfers, seeing like, hey, there's the college football team in the weight room, but I'm training in the same weight room as them. And I can say, hey, guys, this isn't just the football weight room. Like, this is your guys' weight room. Like, this is your hour in here. Like, you own the weight room now. Like, those guys, like, they kind of get a smile. Like, hey, like, they feel like they've kind of made it when they're not just like, hey, like, that's the golf team. They're going to, you know, do a couple band exercises and go out and play. Like, no, we're going to train in this weight room just like every other team trains. With your background, um, first of all, just your, your athletic background, but also your background in strength and conditioning, not specifically in golf at first, um, what are the what are the pros of you coming into it with that you know experience with other sports, especially football and some other sports like that? What do you how do you feel like that has helped you now going into kind of a new venture with golf? I think it's just allowed me to see you know analyze a program overall like what these guys need so we have a you know unbelievable staff with like i said mike tucker runs the football program then i get to work with sean darty who works with a ton of olympic sports uh, matt ambrose sabrina murphy and kevin miller and just having a constant like conversation with these guys like hey what are you doing in your program why are you doing this and being able to bounce all these conversations off and say hey what do i need um from my end what do you guys need from your end and able to collaborate collectively as a whole? I think that's allowed us to put some really, really good programs together um, for our teams because you'll see some of these teams that come in. It's like, hey, very much like the golf team, I might have the men's tennis team who they're not a trained team coming in. Like, hey, what what are the key focuses that we need to train on? When is their first competition? And let's revert backwards, pretty much re-engineer the system and see, hey, how long do I have to build these guys up over the semester? Um, to make sure that they're ready to go for their first tournament. Do you see any big difference between, um, and, and this may just be more of like a mentality of, of the player, but with golf being such an individualized sport, but you know it's in a team aspect in, in college compared to mm-hmm. football that's just solely you know team-based? Um, you know, we work out as a team. Uh, we pretty much do everything as a team with the golf team as a whole. So I would say like, obviously they're a smaller team. They're not as much of a rah-rah group as the football team is. But again, like these guys are pushing each other. Like we don't pretty much, you know, I don't really allow like, Hey, one guy to kind of drift over on his own and do his own thing. Like, Hey, you're going to spot your teammate. You're going to be there, you know, counting out the ISOs for your teammate. You're going to be counting out the tempo when it's knee centric. So you guys are going to hold each other accountable because if you're not doing it in here, then why would you be doing it on the course? So I think collectively as a whole, we're just trying to build these guys up and make them more of a team aspect. And I think you're saying, hey, when you go on to the next level, it's going to be more individualized. But, like, make the most of your team and compete with these guys. They're only going to make you better. So I want to kind of shift gears a little bit into, um, you know, you moving into, like, with social media and everything. Why why the golf fitness piece with all of your other backgrounds? What made you want to go into and kind of ex- expose what you're doing with the golf side of things? I think the first thing's first is just I love playing. Um, you know, that overall for me, has just been like, Hey man, I really enjoy getting out. It doesn't matter what time of year I really get enjoy getting out and playing around with my buddies. And like I said, I wasn't the best golfer, but I was a pretty good athlete. So I could kind of swing the sticks a little bit and feel like I had some confidence when I was playing. Um, and then overall, I just think looking for the future, like we've said, like these guys that are playing on Saturdays and Sundays and closing out rounds, they're not just your regular, like, Oh, this guy was just a good golfer. Like these guys are athletes. They're training like athletes. If you look at guys like Dustin Johnson, you know, John Rahm, these guys, they're strong guys. They're training hard. So for me overall, I don't think golf is the old, you know, country club sport that used to be. I think you're seeing some big time athletes get involved in the sport and and they're kind of running away with it, you know, and Tiger kind of set the precedence way back in the day. You're seeing a guy like DeShambo who's put on 40 pounds and everyone's like, oh, why would he do such a thing? You know, well, he's smashing the ball 300 and some yards, and guys honestly just can't keep up with him. And to see him actually win and it working, I think you're going to see the tides turn a little bit. People are going to say, like, oh, maybe I should try and do something of that sort. Yeah, I mean, I think we're really seeing – and, you know, it's funny because when Bryson first kind of came out with his plan, you know, everybody's kind of like, oh, that's crazy Bryson. He's just doing his thing. And then it's like, whoa, wait, he he actually did it, and, he, and he's just kind of like notching it up even more and it's kind of crazy to see first of all i just love seeing a guy that puts a plan into place 
gets it done, mm-hmm. gets it done, puts in the hard work, and now he's he's seen the results. Um, are some of the kids, some of the the college players, are they talking about like what he's doing? Are they? How much do they watch and, and discuss what's going on on the PGA Tour? Yeah, I mean those guys are definitely dialed into it. Um, it's funny they're always like, "Oh, coach." Like, you got to put the weight on me. How are we going to put the weight on? And I think that's the biggest misconception as a strength coach. It's like, I can get you guys strong, but what are we doing outside of here taking care of ourselves? So that's our biggest thing, you know, outside of what we teach them in the weight rooms. I think we educate them outside the weight rooms. Like, hey, nutrition for you guys is the biggest thing. You know, we don't have, you know, full meals that we can provide you guys. So how are you setting yourself up for success when I finish the lift? Like, I can give you guys a bar and a protein shake, but... That's not the calories that you guys need. You guys need to go eat real food. And they're like, oh, coach, I'm eating. I'm like, well, then you're 180 pounds for a reason. Like, you're not eating enough. You need to mm-hmm. keep, eat, keep eating. But it's hard. And then it comes down to sleep. Like, if you're not sleeping properly, you're seeing the whoop strap has been a huge thing for uh, the golf community lately. Like, guys are all, you know, ready to track their fitness and how much they're sleeping, how much activity they're doing. Um, and I think you're going to see, like, hey, sleep is so important for these guys. And to try and get it on a college campus is definitely tough. But if you're able to prioritize your sleep and your nutrition, I think it's just going to take you so much further and you're going to see those gains come so much quicker. Are you guys utilizing the whoop or something like that? Does, do all the players have it or? We don't, I have it. I think there's a couple guys on the team that have it. Um, you know, I'm a big advocate of sleep. I, was, I thought I was one of those guys who could sleep four or five hours and be fine. But I realized the more that I sleep, it really kind of takes care of a lot of the issues that I've had in the past. Like, I'm less foggy. I'm always feel ready to go. And there's times where I don't sleep, you know, as much as I should. But when I do prioritize my sleep, go to bed the same time almost every night, wake up at almost the same time every day, whether it's a weekend or not. And then the nutrition, you know, it's just a whole nother portion of it's like, are you eating consecutive meals? Are you prepared, ready to go? But the whoop strap, I I know I would advise a lot of people to get it. I love it. Um, But I don't think it's the end all be all for these guys. Like if you recover and you're in the red, which everyone's like, oh, I'm in the red. It's like, that's okay. You still have to go play your tournament, whether you're in the red or not. Um, but I think it's just an awareness thing. Like, hey, did I get enough sleep? Did I not get enough sleep? So I think any of these trackers, they're good to have, but you can't reach, just rely on them alone. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've definitely, you know, I've been using it for I don't know how long now. And at first I was I was like, oh, this is cool. And I'm not a big tech guy. Like, I, I like shiny objects, and then I'll use it for a little bit, mm-hmm. and then I kind of phase out of it. Um, but I've had this, and, and the more I learn about it, and they do try to keep it pretty simple too. Um, yeah. But it, I have I've been fascinated. The more I learn, and the more I really pay attention to like either what I'm eating. And now you know I've got I've got clients. We've got people in the 18 strong community that are that are on it. And it's like, man, you start to see the patterns, and it really does make you more aware yeah. of the things that you're doing. And like even having a couple drinks of alcohol, you know, like close mm-hmm. to bed, makes a huge difference in your recovery. And like the 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 type of sleep that you're getting, and all of those things. It's it's really been fascinating to me, um, you know, and the the population of golfers that I see in per, in person a lot is kind of like your your um, corporate guys, your country club guys. Um, and at first I was like, eh, I don't really know that they'll get a whole lot of benefit out of this thing. And the more I see the results, it's more like, man, these these might be the guys that get the most because they may not be paying attention to what they're eating or drinking or how much they're sleeping right. or all of those things. Um, it's just been really interesting, interesting for me to see personally. I'm curious because you're working with this younger population at the school, what would you say, you know, and a lot of the people listening to this are probably not the collegiate age golfer. They're probably thinking, okay, you know, what are some of the things that I can take from what Colin does and implement into my own personal training regimen? What would you say are maybe some, some differences in the way that you would approach working with the guys that you're working with on a daily basis to maybe somebody at 35, 40, 45 years old. Yeah. I, I mean, the two things I always preach, cause I get people that reach out all the time, like, Hey, can you write me a program? Hey, can you do this? Hey, can you do that? And I said, Hey, the first things first is what are you able to maintain? If you want me to write you a five day workout card, but you don't have time to work out five days a week. Well, then why are we doing that? If you can actually work out two days a week, Let's do two days a week and let's have two great days. So I think and then it comes down to consistency. If we're going to do those two days, we're going to be very consistent on those two days every week. And you're going to start to see, it's like people say, hey, I didn't see any results in the first three weeks. It's like, it's only been three weeks. It takes time. You know, it takes time. There's no magic pill to say, hey, 
I'm going to get in shape overnight. So it does take time. But I say, you know, consistency is definitely one of the most important things to those guys and, and sustainability. I think that goes for diet and exercise and, and pretty much for golf in general. Like, you know, I might go out and have two good rounds in a row and I don't play for a week. And then, you know, it's the same thing. My short game goes back to where it was. And, you know, just like, you know, anything we do in life, if you're not consistent with it, it's going to fluctuate. But if you're consistent, you're going to see continuous improvement. And then what about, um, you know, with the strength strength stuff? Because obviously when you go to your Instagram page and you, and you see, you know, I mean, you're hitting some heavy weights when, you know, when you're doing some of your own stuff, it, it's it's awesome to see that golfers are doing this, right? But I know that a lot of the guys are kind of like, man, is that what I need to be doing then? Uh, what would you say, like strength-wise, mobility-wise, like where would you kind of approach things for, for somebody in that demographic? Yeah, you know, everyone has to start somewhere. So, you know, you might see me, a guy who's played a college sport and have continued to do this lifestyle for a while um, as someone who can go and, and put up some bigger weight. But for other people, it might be a kettlebell. It might be body weight. It might be a TRX. You have to find out what works best for you and find a starting spot. So whatever works for you, like I said, if we can use TRXs and we can use kettlebells and that's what, you know, works efficiently for you. Well, I got news for you. We can make it really hard with a TRX and a kettlebell um, by throwing tempos on there, by throwing, you know, extra sets, extra reps, um, all sorts of things there. And then, like I said, it's, it's all about getting started for these people. Everyone's very nervous to like, well, like, I don't want to be super sore, but if you don't start, you know, you're never going to have any progress. I have two parents that are a little bit older. Um, you know, and it's funny during quarantine, I've got them, you know, in the gym a little bit, you know, I got my dad doing morning walks every day and he's like, Oh, should I be doing runs or should I be doing walks? And I said, well, what's sustainable? You're not going to go out and run every day. So let's just walk. So he walks every day and he's loved and he's lost 15, 20 pounds, which has been awesome for him. You know, and then my mom is another person. She's had two, you know, hip replacements and she's like, oh, I got to get stronger. I got to get stronger. You know, what exercise should I do? I said, hey, we need to start with the basics. We need to get you doing bodyweight exercises, working with some bands and work with some kettlebells and we're going to build you up from there. I love it. I love it. All right. I got to ask you, what would you say are some of the, the worst things that you see golfers doing um, that almost kind of make you cringe, and this could be this could be you know what you see um, being touted to golfers, or what you actually see golfers trying to do when they go to the gym on their own. Huh. I think the first thing you're gonna see is you know it's a guy thing for sure, but you know every guy wants to go ahead and bench press 225. Um, if you can't do it, you know you can't do it. There's no shame in it. So I think that one of the biggest things I see guys do way too much weight with incorrect form and. You might not get hurt the first time, but eventually you're going to get hurt. So I think find a weight, like I said, that works for you. Don't ever be ashamed to be the guy who has, you know, 15 pounds on the bar. If you're moving it well and you're doing the reps that are prescribed and the time that's prescribed, you're going to get stronger. It's progressive overload. You know, it's never fouled. You're going to continue to add weight. But if you're one of those guys that say, hey, the girls are looking at me. I want to put on an extra 45 pounds on each side and you collapse and get hurt. Well, then you're no good to me. So I think that's the biggest thing. It's just like, Hey, don't be afraid like to just do whatever weight works for you. And then we're going to build you up over time. Nice. All right, man. I got a couple questions that we like to ask everybody towards the end of the show here. I'm sure you've, you've got, uh, you've heard a couple of these before, but I might even throw in a couple curveballs at you while okay. we finish up here. Awesome. Um, so first of all, Caddyshack or happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. Every time it's on TV. I had a, I had a feeling you were gonna go Happy Gilmore on me. <laughs> if uh, if you could pick a walk up song to the T box, what's your walk up song? Man, um, it's funny because I have to pick a song for a wedding. I'm in in a couple of weeks. Walk up song, so I'd probably use this one. Um, it'd probably be Serious by the Alan Parsons Project. So it's with the Chicago Bulls just come out too back when Michael Jordan was playing, and nothing gets me going like that song. So I'd probably let that one run. Yeah, I think a lot of people will, will recognize that one after the last dance, especially mm -hmm. recently. Okay, you get to play 18 holes of golf anywhere in the world, and I'm going to give you three people that you get to play with. Who who are your three people? Yeah, it's a great question. There's so many good ones. Um, I'm going to play at Augusta National. You know, I think that's one of the best places in golf to play, so that's where I'm going to play. I'm going to go with Michael Jordan. He's, you know, I'm a basketball guy. Uh, seeing how much golf he plays, I'd love to get a run in with him. Um, Ricky Fowler is one of my guys. I've always been a fan of Ricky. And then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Tony Romo fan. I, he does an unbelievable job. Uh, one as a player, two in the booth. So I think just hearing him maybe like just talk to him about, hey, man, how you've been so successful, just 
one, he's a really good golfer. Two, he can announce. Three, he's a good football player. So there's not much that guy can't do. Yeah, man. He, he would be – that might be the first time he's been mentioned on here for that, but he would be great. He, he's been incredible in the booth. But because of his, his golf ability, too, that'd be, that'd be a fun one for sure. All right, who's your pick for the Masters, the November Masters this year? Oh, man. It's, it's a tough one. But if I say who I want to see win – I want to see Fowler get one, so I'm going to go with my guy Ricky. Yeah, I'm. I've always loved Ricky. I think uh, same deal, man. That guy needs a major. He, he and he's he suited. He's suited for a green jacket, isn't he? Yeah, he would. He would look good in a green jacket. He he would. All right. Um, is there anything that you've read, watched, or seen lately that has really impressed you, or kind of um, you know changed your mind about something? Or even just a, even just a book that you would recommend the listeners. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm a big reader. I love to read. Um, you know, Atomic Habits by James Clear was one that I read over the summer that just kind of like knocked me off my feet a little bit. It's just you know the way the world works, and you know I've really become a fan. And that's kind of a book that ask you know, people ask me like, hey, what should I read? And that's the one I tell them, and I haven't really gotten many bad responses from it. So uh, that's the one I would go with, Atomic Habits. All right, and if you could recommend one golf course, if people were coming to your town, one golf course that they need to play. I haven't played it yet, but it's on my to-do list. Uh, Ironomic Country Club or uh, or Marion, two really good ones. Yeah, I've, I've heard both are incredible. Haven't stepped a foot near either one of them, but awesome, man. Well, Colin, it was an honor to, to have you on the show. It was awesome. I, we covered so much ground here. I think that people are going to need a pen and paper to uh, to jot down a few notes, but really appreciate what you're doing and, and the work that you're putting out for the golf community, and uh, it was really great catching up today. Thanks, Jeff, man. I appreciate you having me on the show. Absolutely.